We're back with the van again, <laughs> and uh, it's got a pretty big problem. It is running super uh, duper rich, and uh, it's enough to the point where I don't feel like driving it anymore. So we need to go and get it figured out. Uh, you want to say, how do I know that it's running super rich? I'll show you. So come over here, and uh, yeah, see the, oh, nice. We've got a uh, little soot on the tailpipe there. Enough that it's blowing it out over here. <laughs> so it's running rich. So we're going to figure it out. One thing I need to do, uh, and uh, this is actually a tip for anybody who is buying a vehicle, make sure the check engine light works. Because uh, we're going to take a look at that, and that would give us some clues, except that I'm pretty sure somebody disabled it. Here we are in the cockpit. Glorious wood grain all around us, surrounding us. I do love this thing a whole lot. Now, um, yeah, so every time, when you're loaded to look, especially to use car, you wanna make sure that your check engine light turns on uh, and check your car that you got, you know, uh, that you're driving today because this is supposed to turn on every single time you start the car and then go off. That's the way you know that it works. And you can tell when I turn this on, you know, I had some other lights come on, but now, no check engine light. So, the uh, either the previous owner pulled the plug on it or pulled the bulb out, or it was on for so long that the bulb burnt out. That's a possibility. Um, and I have to admit, I did not notice that when I bought this van. I was so excited uh, about getting this thing. But uh, so now we have to take this whole dash off. And uh, I want to do this first because I should be able to get this check engine light to flash the codes. And the codes are gonna narrow down what our problem is with the engine because right now, it could be so many things. It could be injectors, it could be throttle body, throttle position sensor, oxygen sensor. So there's a lot of things that it could be. Uh, and rather than just throwing money at all of that stuff, let's try to narrow it down and figure out what's actually wrong. Uh, and then once we're done, with that, we're going to change spark plugs, uh, maybe do some new spark plug wires, and uh, see if we can get this thing running pretty good. Okay, and like I always feel like I need to say, this is not a tutorial, and uh, I'm just going to fumble way, my way through this. So, uh, if you watch to the end, I mean, if I posted this video, it's, it's likely I figured it out. So, uh, one of the problems is we don't have any instructions. <laughs> <laughs> this should come out pretty easily. Uh, I got a couple screws here. I know that this piece, well, that's a screw there. One of these pieces just pops off. Yeah, this one here. I had that off before. There's the first piece we can lose. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think, you know, here, let's go ahead and turn that radio off. We don't need that on. Um, like there's screws on here, but I think, I don't think these screws actually have anything to do. I think that can stay attached. And uh, this guy, Velcro, so we can pull him off. So let's get to screwing. Okay, the thing is free, and look, would you look right there? Yep, it just is uh, removed. So that's a good sign. But uh, the good news is we can just pop her back in there. Uh, this one over here, uh, it looks like there's one missing there, but there's actually not a socket for that. So let's see what um, these guys were for. So the middle one is missing over there, and yeah, we got check engine. And over here, we got uh, airbag. Wait a second. I could have sworn I've seen an airbag light. Pretty sure I saw an airbag light. I mean, this does have an airbag. But, uh, yeah, there's definitely no uh, 
definitely no socket down there for a bulb, but so but how are we supposed to get those bulbs? You got an idea on that one? I guess take uh, that screw off. Whoa, sorry. My bad. Always unhook the negative battery cable. And I want to clean this uh, lens up too while we're in here. Just all of this is a little gunky. It just bothers me. I think we can do better. One thing, and if you're going to work on your own stuff, I recommend whenever you buy bulbs or filters or any kind of like item that is consumable, always buy more than you need. Because I found, I had, uh, this is a 194 bulb. And uh, we're gonna see if we can slide it in there. That, this looks to be uh, nigh impossible. And I'm pretty sure that once we slide it in there, we may not ever be able to get it out. But uh, let's just try scooching it in. No, no, this is not going to work. All right, we'll try it anyway. We put it in there. Maybe I can wiggle it up. Wiggle, wiggle, get, oh, oh nope. Oh, now it's completely turned around. And, uh, no, wait, hmm, oh, wait, nope. All right, let's see if we can get it back out. I have to use the pinky finger here. Well... All right, I'll be right back. Okay, we have a development. I was trying to wiggle that thing out, but it's kind of almost in the socket now, so I'm just gonna see if I can push it up and in. Nope. All right, here's my idea. I have taped the bulb to the end of a screwdriver. <laughs> and we're gonna try to get this in here. This should work and not just get tape stuck everywhere. And not, hopefully not break the bulb you gotta go just slide in <gasps> look at that <laughs> I'm unstoppable let's try and see if we get our check engine lights I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in park so we can start the vehicle hey look at that all right so that goes on and that should stay on Yep, because the engine's not running. So let's start it up. We're in park, okay. Now, this should come back on. I'm surprised it's not, actually. That concerns me a little bit. Because if the, if the computer's not storing any codes, well then this whole exercise is somewhat useless. And it is running, yeah, it's already running rough. Come on, give me a light. Give me a light. Let's try putting that in gear. Okay, well, we've made progress. It is not the progress that I wanted. But, we at least have a check engine light now. All right, so we gotta pull codes off of this thing. Again, we didn't get the check engine light staying on, and I was looking under the dash for the OBD connector, the one where you can read the codes, and I don't have an OBD1 code reader. Uh, these are OBD1, which went through like 1995, uh, and I remember on my 86 Cutlass, uh, I could just stick a paper clip into the connector and then I could just turn the key on and the codes had flash on the screen. I was like, this will be great, I'll do that. Looked under the steering wheel, no connector anywhere, and I'm not a Ford guy, uh, so I looked it up and apparently it's under the hood. And uh, so here's what we're going to do. So I found it, it was uh, right here next to the reservoir, plugged in there to keep it nice and dry. So we've got this connector. And that one, which again, this is completely different than what I remember on my 86 Cutlass. But uh, rigged up a, a wire, and we're just going to jumper two wires together. 
And if you're like me, you don't have any uh, flat connectors, so just squish a ring connector down until that'll fit in there. And then just jam that in there. Just, just jam it in. Like you don't even care. Look at that. Beautiful. And then we're going to do the same thing right here. Maybe. Jam it. Just jam it. Like, just jam it in there. Ah. All right, so now we have jumpered those two pins together. Let's go into the van and uh, turn the key on. See what we get. Oh, good, the keys are in. That's a good start. Okay. So we go. All right, whoa, was that three or one? That was five, six, five, six, four, five. Okay, hold on. We're going to have to get some paper. There's all sorts of codes in this bad boy, which is good. It's going to help us narrow it down. But uh, I have already lost track of where we're at. So let me get something to write on, and uh, and we'll be back. Okay, so here's all the codes that we pulled, and here's what they are. So uh, we're starting at the top, 56 mass airflow high. I didn't think that these had mass airflow sensors, but... Uh, whatever device it's using, or maybe I need to rerun that code. That one is somewhat expected because I, I have started it a couple times with the air box off, and so it may actually be seeing uh, more air coming in uh, than it needs. So I'm not, not going to worry about that now. PCM pin 5 under volt, which is saying it's below 7 volts or no volts, uh, is a little bit concerning, uh, but I don't know what pin 5 is a reference to and I don't know I don't know I'm a little worried because of just the unknown that that <laughs> represents the worst case scenario is that um, the uh, board is starting to go bad the PCM board itself uh, so that's not fun uh, intermittent O2 signal I believe that uh, the way this thing is running it is probably already ruined that O2 sensor so We'll have to work on that. Idle air control not responding. Um, I mean, it's it's idling pretty rough. I could see that. Uh, I'm not sure that that would create the super rich condition, condition that we're seeing. Uh, vehicle speed sensor. Uh, this might not be a problem uh, just because, um, you know, I've started a couple times, and then especially when I was running the test, the uh, vehicle was not moving. So that one may be okay. EGR did not open. Um, that I wouldn't be surprised on that. I think those Ford EGR valves are just uh, less than reliable. But we'll uh, we'll look at that too. That may be another one where it just needs to get up to temperature uh, and throttle position sensor out of range. I this is the one that I think is probably the bit the biggest culprit of the way that the machine is running right now. Uh, so I went to the store. Uh, to AutoZone, they didn't have one of these in stock, so they ordered it up and it should be in tomorrow. So we're going to start by replacing the throttle position sensor, and hopefully with the data from that, some of these other ones will fall back into line. We'll get the airbox put on, and then we're just going to clear the codes and uh, see what happens. But I'm pretty sure we're going to have to replace that O2 sensor as well. So game plan, uh, throttle position sensor, put it back together, clear codes see what happens. Alright, so I looked up what it's going to take to change the throttle position sensor in this thing and it's... I'm going to regret it. So, you have to take the throttle body off, which only has four bolts, but it's... I mean, there and there and... Let's see. There. Whoop. Yep, there, and there. That's not too bad, right? Except that 
I mean, this is in the way, and you know, that's in the way. You know, this is in the way, and um, yeah, that's in the way too. So, it's great. Okay, so I moved this guy down that was up here. That's a heck of a connection, isn't it? Look at that, boom. <laughs> that's a lot of wires. Nothing could possibly go wrong in here. Uh, so it gives me room to, to get up to the throttle connections. I got the actual throttle cable off of there. This goes down to the transmission, I believe. It's like a kick down cable or something. So, but I can't get that off. I don't know if you're supposed to pry that off or pull it off. I have no idea. So, uh, yeah, I got that. There's a water line up here that's going to have to come off. That's great. Uh... And then I don't know what this is. This black plate here, it's holding this thing here that does a thing and goes into this thing. It, it's like vacuum? Airflow? Vacuum? Vacuum airflow? I have no idea. It's a pretty crusty vacuum line down here, though. Maybe it'll just break and fall off. That'll get it out of the way. All right, I did the smart thing, uh, which was Google to see how to remove this kickdown cable right here. Uh, and it turned up nothing, so I resorted, resorted to just pulling it off. And that worked. Yeah, I just pull it straight towards the front of the vehicle and it slides off and hopefully uh, we'll go back on someday. So yeah, it's still got good, uh, good motion. So this runs down to the transmission and it's supposed to tell the transmission like how much throttle is being given or something, I don't know, I don't know. Now what do we do? Okay, so we got that unhooked. We need to figure out what this big black monolith is back here. How is it even hooked on? I can't even see any bolts connected to it. Maybe we can just pull that off too. Oh, well, I found the uh, mystery bolt holding the black monolith on. Where is it even at? Uh, you can't see nothing. This is a joy to work on. Uh, so right there, so we were to put the nut back on there. So that we don't uh, forget that nice lock nut. And then that uh, basically doesn't move out of the way at all. So that really didn't help. But um, yeah, we're it's a step closer, maybe. And then look at this. Who did this? Who put the twisting end of this uh, clamp to the inside of the engine where you cannot get a single screwdriver on it? I want to murder you. See, now I'm having a little trouble getting this uh, vacuum line off down here, so we're just going to, you know, just cut it. Can't see anything. Aha! All right. I mean, that was really uh, crusty and probably about to blow anyway. So now she's off. Did I cut through any extra wires down there? Yep, probably so. All right, so here's what's infuriating me at the moment. I've got just about everything disconnected. I still need to get this um, coolant cable here. Why there's coolant going to the throttle body? I don't know. Uh, so I need to get that loose. And then down here, so this cable right that. here. I'll show you in a second, darling. It goes up here. That goes up to the old throttle position center, sensor. Uh, and then it comes down around here and goes into who knows where. Arrgh. So I'm attacking the bolts, got one out there and it is fallen into the abyss. And no, it's not falling on the floor. So it's in there somewhere. Is it there? Is that it? Nope. Oh wait, it's shiny. Nope. Hmm. Where'd the bolt go, Emma? See if you can find it. You got little hands. See, shine it right down here, Dad. There you go. Uh, Did you find it? Not yet. All right, so hey, look, progress. We got this off. We got the throttle body. It's loose. Look, another coolant line. Great. Uh, and we still don't know how to get to the connector. I'm hoping I can get a better angle on it once I get this yanked out a little bit but now who does this okay throttle body is loose good news is 
I can see. Where are we at? And yeah, I got that other coolant line loose. So there's our connector down there, and it's got a little uh, plasticky thing on there, riveting it in. Maybe I can get a little trim piece and pull that out. Let's see. Victory. We got this bad boy out. Um, we did. Uh, we yeah, we had some good luck, and I had I used uh, this guy right here. Uh, that worked pretty well for popping that little tab off. It was, I don't know where, I'm not going to put it back on. I mean, come on. It's fine. But, uh, yeah, we got this. We're going to have to get a new gasket here. Because this thing is probably junk. Um, but, yeah, we can get this uh, over here. Hopefully get this off. Let's see. Okay, got that. There's the old one. Can't imagine why it's bad. Here's the new one. Can we uh, get that on? All right, so these bad boys, um, I guess they get stuck a lot. I don't know, mine came out really easy, but I go ahead and run the old tap and die of the same size over them. I'm sure people are gonna say that's an absolutely terrible idea, but I mean, that's threading right in there. And because uh, these had a bunch of old like Loctite on them and stuff, so yeah, that just kind of helps clean up the threads quite a bit. You know, if you take a look at, I haven't done this one yet, it's got all that crusty thread lock in it from the factory, and you know, I run a little tap down the threads there. We'll do the same over here, hit it with some brake clean, and then hopefully, uh, good to go. And then, so when this guy turns, here's the throttle. Which doesn't look like it's leaking at all. Um, we can get a reading. That'd be great. Which will hopefully, you know, turn that guy in there. So we're gonna go ahead and before we put this back on, I mean that's really pretty nasty. We're gonna hit it with this uh, Berryman B12 Kim tool. I love uh, somebody who's bold enough to call a liquid a tool. Uh, carburetor choke, throttle body, and shoe cleaner. So. Uh, let's just get this stuff in here and see if it does any good. Mmm. Can you see that stuff just pouring out of there? Like, ugh. <laughs> we should probably take this guy off too and clean that. Look at that. Ugh. Well. I gotta say, the Kim tool is working. Ooh, look at that. Not the owner's manual. I, nah, I don't know what that is. Stop. Just stop. Hold on, just stop. Get over there. I mean, it'll probably just clean my bench, right? Let's see here. Oh, nice. Alright, there's it. But there, in there, maybe in there. It's doing something. I mean, look, you can see some shiny metal in there now. Actually, I'm somewhat impressed. This stuff is uh, doing something. It's doing something. Okay, so this guy looks about 700 times better than it did before so uh, I did end up taking the uh, idle air control valve off here got that bubble we cleaned out and uh, I think what we're gonna do now is we're gonna order up a new gasket on here because I don't trust to reuse this bad boy even though it's all kinda coming off as one piece let's see yeah see look whoo that's a bunch of mumbo jumbo and that's all just oil. Just nasty oil. Because, why? Well, we can't have that stuff going into the atmosphere, so we gotta suck it back into the engine and reburn it so that it can, you know, go into the atmosphere. So we're gonna order us up another one of these. That side looks good. Wow, that is a remarkable amount of accumulation on that. 
Uh, we'll get a new one of those ordered up. Uh, what else do we need? Probably some hose clamps. We need some vacuum line. And uh, maybe some water hose. I've got a bad feeling about some of these hoses here. You know, if you take a look at this uh, heater hose, like that's not about to blow or anything like that. Uh, we'll get that put in there. You know, that goes on into the intake there, which. How's that look inside there? Great. I'm sure that's exactly what the uh, cylinders look like, too. So, yeah, we'll get that done there. It doesn't look like, at least, that it was sucking outside air anywhere. A little coolant dripping down there, but for the most part, I'm sure it's fine, I guess. Yeah, it's nasty. So I think we're going to call that video here. Um, go ahead and get this parts ordered, get that put back together, check the idle. Hopefully it idles better. Um, I got the battery unplugged here, so codes are clearing. And um, If it's not that, it's got to be injectors or the whole computer is just confused. So we'll try it out. Once again, this is not a tutorial, which if you've made it this far in the video, I think you're fairly well aware of that. Um, if you like this kind of stuff, put that in the comments. Uh, I work on all sorts of different stuff from uh, vehicles to four-wheelers to fixing electronics and radios and computers. So uh, put that in the comments if you like this. I can do more of this because Lord knows this thing needs all the help it can get. Uh, and uh, if you like the video, like it. Uh, if you didn't like the video, Downvote it and also tell me what you hated about it and how stupid I am because that really builds the confidence. Uh, and uh, subscribe if you aren't. Thanks for watching.